HMRC, there's a wave tank, it's in UCC. Uh, we're funding it, we're trying to improve it and enhance the facilities there. Uh, they actually developed this, which is a really important document, which is actually a phased protocol for developing wave devices. It's since been co copied for type devices by the UK, and since then actually the IA now is going to probably adopt this one and actually with changes that's under review at the moment. But basically what it says is on the left-hand column you can see uh, HMRC, BCA and Galway Bay. HMRC is Cork. We have a tank down there where you can take, uh, test small-scale models. Next you have to go to a big tank. So one place is not, or you might go to Trondheim in Norway. You're not going to compete against them. But then phase three, you need to build a quarter-scale device, or a third-scale, or a fifth-scale. And you need to put it in the water to see what happens. Galway Bay is unique. It's the only place in the world where we've got quarter-scale heights and it's scaled in energy, time as well. So the heights are reduced and the period. It's the only place in the world that that happens, which is unique. EMET, which is in the Orkneys, that's for full scale prototypes. And then down the bottom is Mayo and Wave Up. Wave Up is in England, but Mayo, what we're doing is we're building a real full scale, full resource test site off the west coast of Ireland, where the waves are substantial every day. On a quiet day, the waves make it three metres. Three metres is nine foot, so it's actually pretty high to go out in a very small boat. Galway Bay test site, just quickly, this is in Galway Bay, it's fiddled, it's unique, it's for quarter scale testing, wave bobbing on it, ocean uh, energy and carp as well. These are the two devices, it's the only time anywhere that this has happened, there's been two wave devices in the water at once together, a little work flow between them, that's just fiddled in the distance. Uh, this is the full scale test site that we're developing in Belmullet, and what we're going to do is we're going to develop a couple of zones for a near scale device, mid depth uh, device, and uh, deep water device. Uh, we also work on the reinforce, we work with the Marine Institute every day, they're part of our team, and we uh, collaborate on the Galway Bay, Mayo, HMRC, Industry Fund. Some of the technologies, um, Brian mentioned that it'd be good to show some of the technologies needed. The Marine Institute have a wave model, you can actually log on to the uh, website and see it. And there's other Irish companies that are actually developing this, numerics, marathon, etc. And we've asked them to come together to actually come up with a plan for what Ireland needs in this area to develop, actually go back, to develop wave models. This is a new area, you know, wind models have been around a number of years, wave models need to be developed. And that's one area that people need to come to us actually for research in this area and we try to support them to develop uh, tools that we can then export around the world. Uh, seabed mapping program. I always laugh at this. This is, this is Ireland seabed mapped. It's only the colour bits that are mapped. It's not very good for the 21st century. They have a plan in place and they're working hard on it. But they need more resources as well. Air grid, we're aligned with air grid to make sure that the grid is there to meet the locations where devices and resources probably go. They're also dealing with the strategic environmental assessment would help to inform this as well. So the other measure, the SEA that I mentioned, engineering and special supports, the vessels to go out, the ports, moorings, deployments, there's a lot of O&M work that is mentioned to support the device that Pamela mentioned for the wind as well. There's things like that needed. And also a new ITC, for example, you might have heard of Smart Bay, which is a unique bay in the world where IBM are working with the Marine Institute and deploying a large sensor network for water quality, and one area is ocean energy, because we have a test site there, so they're going to develop a portal that will integrate the wave, the wave uh, models that the Marine Institute have. Um, devices, just to give you some pictures before I finish up. This is MCT, you might have heard of it, in Strangford Lock. This is Northern Ireland, so there's the actual current going by it. This has actually been installed, so you can see that's a quiet shelter bay. This is Palan, has been told out to the Orkneys. Uh, this is actually Ocean Energy they're Limited, they're in Cork, they have an oscillating, floating oscillating water column device. That's the device that went into Galway Bay when it was uh, being built. You can see the scale with the guys, that's a quarter scale. This is device actually on site in Galway Bay. Uh, open Hydro, you might have seen this basically, um, they developed a uh, tidal turbine, it's deployed in EMEC and they're also deploying it in uh, Bay of Fundy last week. Uh, they run it, ran into issues with piling into EMIC. Uh, they put piles in, took, took a lot of time, much longer than they expected, and a lot more money. So, what they did is they had to come up with their own deployment mechanism. So, they built their own deployer. So, they bring this, this is actually, they can break it up, 
put it into standard shipping containers and ship it anywhere in the world. They just shipped it to Bay, Fund, to Bay Fundy and they deployed a 10 meter device with it last week and they pulled the device back out of the water as well. That device is going to go in this winter for a year in Bay Fundy. Uh, Wave Bob is the device, the quarter scale device in Belfast. That's it in Galway Bay. Okay, market potential. So basically, you know, the estimated global electric wave energy is 2,000 terawatt hours in the world. 600 billion euros of equipment everybody has got. All big, great numbers. In Ireland, we have 500 megawatts, but that's equivalent to about 1.75 billion in sales. It's a fair bit of number for 2020. You can see that we are competing reasonably with the UK and the American targets. Um, but there are challenges, and the challenges are, are we're being passed out so that's why we're, we're trying to get moving. And, we're, and one good thing is we're a small island, so we communicate well, so that we can make partnership work. And there's big difficulties dealing in the marine environment. And Ireland, even though we're an island, have very poor ports, very few uh, work vessels. And that's an area that we have to reinforce immediately. And uh, the opportunities is there's huge renewable energy resources up there, and like, there's a great opportunity here um, to establish an industry. And uh, I'll finish up by saying one thing is uh, so that it's actually the industry led research group said that there's 1.8 billion worth of sales to support the 2020 figure for, uh, for ocean energy. And we have the resource in Ireland, as you saw at the start. So, what's going to happen is multinationals are going to come to Ireland eventually when the technology is up and working might be 2030, but they'll come here eventually and they'll deploy their devices. So what they'll do is they'll do site investigation work and they'll bring somebody from Norway to do the site investigation work. Then they'll have to actually uh, deploy the devices, they'll bring somebody, they'll bring the work boats from Holland and then actually for one end it may be somebody from uh, Scotland. We need to develop industry in Ireland, there's a huge opportunity. And as Owen always says, uh, we don't want to be making the sandwiches and coffee. You know, we want to be actually building the devices, building the software, exporting the expertise. There's a huge opportunity here, and it's not just in Ireland, it's something that we can export and uh, we can be good at it as well. That's it. Thank you.